this FTX and, and blockchain and all that shit just exposes what's actually going on mm -hmm. in traditional finance. Mm -hmm. Because do you think that that fucking little guy, Sam Bankman Fried, was at, really at the fucking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. doing all that and, yeah. and being involved with uh, there's so many political parties that he yeah. was and, and the SEC and all yeah. that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like donated 40 billion to the. Right? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to your future channel, Biggs and Boggs. I'm Marty Boggs. And I'm Julian Biggs. And we got Spencer on sound and screens. Thanks for joining us today, folks. We like to come at you about once a week or so and talk about some subjects that we believe will benefit your future hands. So let's get right into it. Smash that like button, wherever it is these days. What are we up to today and how can we plan for tomorrow? Julian. Thanks, Marty. Good to be back. Today, we're going to talk about the CPI numbers and the possible interest rate coming or maybe not coming this week. Marty's got a story to tell us, so we'll see what's going on there. And of course, as always, we're going to get into it with a market scope. Ooh, market scope. <laughs> get to it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I got uh, zoomed out so we can see this is a span of what's been going on this year or since the, the double top or the bear divergence that we had at the end of last year, but we are going to get zoomed in to see what's going on. But this is what's played out for this year. We're coming into the end of the year, so let's have a look on the bigger scheme, zoom out a bit. And uh, it's been almost, going down. You know, it's been going down. Down, down, so, down, down, down. They say we're reaching the bottom, but what is going on? I said we we're going to be floating around in this zone for all of December, and that's clearly what's going on. But we are just riding the top of this uh, this this range here, which is 17.2, hovering underneath 17.2 into this apex here in the next zone between 17 and 18.2. So what's going to happen here? We do have the release of the CPI number. So the consumer price index is basically an average uh, uh, of the price change in a cost of basket of goods and cost of living and things like that. And, and they do that every month and release that to us. So the numbers have been getting softer because they've fucking crushed the economy this year. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, I, I think that, that we will have a little bit of a softer number coming out. And there is now talk of them potentially um, mm -hmm. stopping the interest rate hikes. Pivoting, potentially. You know, it you doesn't know, necessarily mean stopping, but maybe softening, softening, rounding it out. Yes. Getting towards the top. And well, that's yeah. what people are looking for, the, the, the top, right? Yeah. And then, but if we go into 2023, so the, the plan was to be at 4.5 basis points. So if we, if we, you know, have a little fake out here in December, potential mm -hmm. little fake out here in December, if they don't raise the interest rates, have a little bit of a pump here, and then in January, they crash the market on you again. Mm -hmm. So I'm personally skeptical. There's a lot of people that are starting to lean bullish now. You yeah. can see that there's a, there was a big purchase in the charts today as well, but mm -hmm. you can see the dailies just chopping it out here sideways and still, uh, you know, we're running into this resistance, and in my opinion, we are yeah. below the support we need at this point. So 17.2, yeah. 17.3 is where we need to get above. This week's going to be a big week, and isn't, isn't it funny how we have these numbers coming out this week as well as... Potent, uh, what is it on the 14th they're going to be doing the um the rate hike announcement so this yeah. week is substantial for numerous reasons yeah. and we're coming right to that descending line of uh resistance resistance right? and, and you can see i have two i have two lines of show resistance me the charts so i'll tell you the news so if we go if we zoom back out i have two resistance lines here and one ranges it's just nutty how that always plays out one ranges from the, the the previous high and then right one from the more recent high and i actually have it from this the first and not the other part of the bearish divergence there mm -hmm. um but anyways we're getting right to so it they look right? a little different it's a clear trend line we've hit it multiple different times yeah. and yeah. now we're getting right up to it as we have a big week among us and on the daily chart there we're days away just yeah. like we're days away from these announcements yeah. so it's stuff so, like that ta on the charts it lines up with the narrative and the news all 100%, 100%. the time, all the time. It's crazy. You can't ignore it. Yeah. So this is this is why this is the sort of stuff you need to pay attention to because this is how you have the leg up on everybody else. If you right. know TA, if you know this stuff, and all these things are lining up, mm -hmm. it's the confluence of multiple things mm -hmm. that it, that can give you that advantage come tomorrow, come mm -hmm. the next week, come next year, anything that's happening in the future. Mm -hmm. This is how we this is how we figure it out. This is how we have mm -hmm. our at least our best guess at figuring it out. And uh <clears throat> yeah, that's true. And then like this honestly looks like it could be a little flaggy, but Yeah, it does look like a little bit, well, honestly, so if we break out and we see a retest, yeah. and we have and then we have 
uh, dovish so, quote numbers, which are less, you know, coming on the, down on the yeah, hawkish okay. being harsh on the economy, dovish being soft on the economy, then, then we're due for potential, a potential up for, you know, maybe a little bit, but right. like you said, so the original, uh, a percentage they wanted to get to, I believe, was seven percent because inflation was on average. I'll eight take or it right to ten. Fuck it. Just well, <laughs> well, well, the the law of whatever the t- Taylor's law says yeah. that whatever uh, inflation is to correct it, you have to raise the interest rates that much, right? So we were at zero. Inflation year over year was around eight percent. So they were they were quoting in the beginning that they're going to go to seven right. over a number of yeah. months, right? And then they're realizing that even at four percent, it's really damaging the economy. Well, it's so. funny because, like you said, they. They're, they, we've talked about this uh, in weeks past and other episodes that they aren't. They're so dis, uh, they're so disconnected from the situation. They're just going off the numbers that they're getting, mm-hmm. right? So they don't actually know what's happening. They, they have no idea what's happening. And people like the the Fed is just the Federal Reserve that makes the decisions in our monetary policy and decides what they what is best for us financially mm-hmm. is twelve people. Yeah. So twelve people sit and decide yeah. what's best for us. Not financially. connected to us whatsoever. Not connected to us outside of government control. Yeah. They don't even have to answer to the president. Yeah. Just so they have the ability to make decisions on their own and what they think is best for the Which economy. Which is a private company. It's fucking twelve fucking people. By the way, <laughs> a private company does yeah. this. So, well, they're they're appointed by the president, but, but it's privately owned. It's not privately owned. It's a govern. It's a government sector not controlled by the president, but is still appointed by the president. So it's like. This weird fucking gray area. <laughs> what anyway, is it? so I want to let us know wanna, in the comments. Yeah. What is it? What I want to come it? back to the. I want to come back to the charts for a sec here because I was talking about the SPX and the SPX, the SP five hundred. So uh, we have say it, but we'll say it again. It's the five hundred largest publicly traded companies into one stock index, and this basically drives the market, right, based on their capitalization. So. Um, we basically we call this top here so again we're seeing all these bearish divergences in the markets where's my brush uh so we had the bearish divergence there and uh and we called that top here so now the question is is this actually uh, a fake out dump and we're going to see this bullish momentum that everyone's talking about or is this going to be confirming that wow man if these freaking brush could just go away here so we could get back to moving around um so if this this is broken out of the bullish momentum that it had, this is exactly what happened to Bitcoin. It had a bullish trend, then the SPX had its bullish trends. Though this pushes the market, I find that the pattern is actually lagging from that of Bitcoin. So we had the bullish trend in Bitcoin, and now we've had the bullish trend in the SPX, and this could potentially be confirming this breakdown out of this trend here. You can see we've broken out of the ascending channel and confirmed a, a test, another test of this resistance line, and now on the back on the downside. So mm-hmm. um, this week really will tell us, right? Will we get a bounce, or what's we'll, gonna what's gonna yeah. go on here, right? So yeah. this could very well be a fake out dump, and then you know a exactly, confirmation, right. and then boom, this thing goes. That's back what I was to gonna say. Upside. Always, so, always keep that in mind. When you see that fake pump, it usually mm-hmm. goes down. When you see that quick dump, it yeah. usually goes back up. That's right, because right? they're they're the market makers are pushing. Uh, the market to where they want it right. to get the price they want and, for it before they go the opposite direction. And the thing is, is that they don't necessarily care where the price is, though, either. No, they just care what they can do to it because they're going to go to where the liquidity is. So exactly. if, if the you limit put your stop loss or you put your orders or wherever, they're going up to where they can take your money. So if and, you're trading, always pay attention to the funding rate. Yeah. I will tell you, if the funding rate is negative, that means there's no more pressure to short the market. That means there's yeah. more money above the price that it is. If the, yeah. if the funding rate is positive, that means there's more money below. Mm. So a, a lot of the times, as long as you're not using too high of leverage, you want to go against the funding rate because that's usually what tells you where the liquidity is and mm-hmm. where the market's most likely to get pushed. It will be most likely a quick move though because they go up and scoop up the shorts before they go down or they go down and scoop up, up the, the longs, longs before they go up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it, it's crazy that we came to this time and we called the top there uh, and we called the bottom numbers that we've seen so far for Bitcoin. Uh, whether or not it's going to go lower, yeah, in the New Year's way, is really going to big depend, news is going to be a big week. Really going to depend on whether going to be a big week. Pay attention. There's lots of stuff, lots not. of contagion still spreading throughout the yeah. the, the markets. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Tether is going to go down and it's going to bring Bitcoin down to 10k. Yeah. And it's like, so it's well, funny because dude, that, I think that'll do a lot more damage than that if it's uh, yeah if, 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 if Tether, Tether goes tanks, under, whoo, it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Definitely going to want to pay attention to it. So this is supposed to be on the But is it going to tank, though? That's the question. 
Wow. I feel like it's been they've been they've tried to debag depeg tether multiple times. FTX was going to tank either. Right? That's true. That's true. Anything's possible. We're in this for the long run, so it's all good. We're DCA and we're not all in. Yeah. We're not going all in. And it's so, funny because some other YouTubers have actually said that maybe now is the time to go all in. I've heard it. I've heard it say said on on other shows that this is the bottom. Bottoms in. Let's go. And then obviously everyone's saying next week, this week that's coming up is going to be a the huge unfortunate week, thing. at such low numbers is that if it drops five thousand dollars, that's a huge mm -hmm. percentage. That's a huge mm -hmm. percentage of these lower numbers, right? Mm -hmm. That's why. I don't know. It's hard to just go all in. I don't know. I've never, never been, go all I've never, in. Never been the all in kind of guy. Never. Go so I got this. In. Here's here's actually um, here's Bitcoin versus Tether on the monthly time frame too. And as you can see, that we're actually getting back to the highs of. Uh, of 2017. 2018 here, 18. 2017 and 2018. Right. From from that bull run there, we're actually just sitting right on top of that, right? And I don't know. To me, that is a little bit significant as it nears this apex here from the resistance mm -hmm. top, mm -hmm. uh, the last value high as well. So, you well, know, so like, what ba basically everybody is saying is, despite a black swan event, this yeah. should be bottom. Yeah. Technically speaking, it should be bottom. And if this something is, happens in the macro environment that's going to just crush the economy, yeah. then we'll see it another low. You can see the lack of movement. Yeah, in, we've gone completely sideways in this, this whole month. in this candle this month, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, whether that's going to end up being the morning star candle and and things kind of starting to push the other direction or if we're going to get the next dump back to the next zone here. So well, even uh, just volume in general has been t trending down. Obviously it's, you know, it's December, it's a holidays. People got other yeah. things on their mind. Um, there will probably be more spending and, and that sort of thing this type of year. So people are, are going to be selling Bitcoin. Mm. So as well as we have a lot of people dollar cost averaging in, like we saw this morning with a nice big buy, mm. um, like there's still just a ton of people that are taking profits so they can buy Christmas presents. Like mm -hmm. things are moving around, right? It's funny because uh, this type of year is so commercialized. It's, it's for a reason. It's because that it, the whole year there, there there's so many things that nobody's sort of like they're just trying to do their own thing. But at the end of the year, everybody's buying. Like mm. the, you, it, it's it's in your it's in your upbringing. Everyone's buying. Like so, buy, like there's buy, businesses buy, buy. out there that they're literally survive their full year off of their December income. Every every single year, it's it's Christmas and Boxing Day that they make their <coughs> entire year, you know, ninety percent of their year income, right? So there's all these stores that are that are relying on December, right. and it's stuff like that that is, you know, the commercialism that keeps people spending is that is going to affect these markets, right? So we just have to keep that in in mind. But right. what what are we at right now for? Uh, for market cap, market cap. So just yeah. under, just under a, a trillion dollars. So okay, so still quite low. Which is yeah, but it's still. <clears throat> it's a lot. Well, it's not a lot actually. If you, you look at like uh, derivatives, it's, it's no, in, it's in the quadrillions, right? So there's there's nowhere near. It's a very small yeah. market cap still, and in in real estates and in, in you know I don't know yeah. I can't trillions obviously I'm not gonna I don't know the number right off mm -hmm. by heart. And the all time but, high was more than I double, know derivatives because so. it's quadrillions and that's um, like what quadrillions? What is that? <laughs> so derivatives. Twenty four there's there's quadrillions crazy 24 hour volume was only actually it's very low it's super super yeah low it's super right low now. nobody's crazy. well everybody's sitting billion. on the sidelines right yeah. now waiting. waiting for next week what's going to happen right yeah. and that's why so all the people that are impatient are going to jump in on the early announcement of these numbers that, and that's what we were saying you're going to either see a quick pump and then the market's going to sell off so it's going to be all these people that jumped in that were impatient because the market mm -hmm. is patient taking from the impatient. Mm -hmm. They wait to they, have the impatient, impatient people jump in and then they do the right thing. Right. Like the, the, the patient people, they watch, they let the guy jump and say, oh, did he make it? Oh, he didn't make it. <laughs> Let's the, do that. Let's go over here. All right. Like the USDT market's a $65 billion market. Man. I know. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Be fucking crazy. You, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's going to be crazy. I mean, and I think they did a... Um, Somebody's asking to show the, the proof, proof of reserves, and they were only down a couple million or something like that. So right. don't quote me on that. Let me know in the comments if you know the answer to that one. But I do believe that Tether's been attacked multiple times. Um, there's speak that the, the Luna crash was actually people trying to take out Tether, mm -hmm. but uh, Luna was just affected because it was so fragile at the time mm -hmm. that they were actually one that uh, ended up taking taking the the um the brunt of it but uh i don't know like it's it's a stable coin i don't really know too much about tether i personally hold no tether so i i haven't really been much investigated so don't uh listen to what i have to say about it but yeah you're right obviously if it goes under but you do need a stable coin to use um so, which everybody's saying usdc is the yeah, one you should be using yeah usdc you can hold on on coinbase or you I can have none of that either 
I use Binance, so I use BUSD personally. Yeah. And, yeah, and I have a little bit. I just put some more into BUSD sitting on the sidelines because mm-hmm. I'm curious to see Anyways, what's going to happen here. Anyways, talking so. about that, let's get in. Talking about stable coins, let's get into my story. Story uh, time with my Buddy pen, So my Gather around. <laughs> gather around, folks. Everybody Bring the gather kids around. In. Bring the, the kids likes. In. Hey, we got some fucking in. education. Bring the Okay, so no, I just want to share a story. So um, as you guys know, I took a trip to the States recently, and I grabbed, you know, uh, some U.S. currency for my, for my trip. Um, so I got back to Canada. I had more than I needed down there. So I, you know, I have a good number of, uh, you know, hundred dollar bills that I want to transfer at the bank. So I go to the bank, I'm waiting in line and, uh, I can see the person over at the teller, but her back's turned to me and I can tell she's upset about something, right? I, I can't hear much what she's saying because there's screens everywhere and, and all that sort of stuff, but I can tell she's upset. I can kind of hear what the teller's saying because she's facing me and she's saying, um, it's not in our system. I'm so sorry, blah, 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 this and that, right? I'm like, oh boy, like there's something going on with her. Hey, she loves the bank today. <laughs> Anyways, I finally get called up to, to the next teller and it happens to be the teller right beside her. And uh, so it turns out, once I was beside her, I could hear the whole story of what they're talking about. She had ordered 2,000 US dollars uh, on online banking. She would she had got the confirmation email that she could come and pick it up that day at the bank. She came to the bank, they didn't have her money because obviously the bank doesn't have money. So you need to give them advance information if you're gonna try and pick it up. Mm-hmm. So she did that and even then it didn't work out. And here, am, here I am uh, going there to transfer my US dollars, I'm like, I can hear this lady saying that she wants U.S. currency. I'm sitting here with a bunch of U.S. currency. I'm like, almost, almost just hit her on the shoulder and was like, "Hey, like, do we even like the I the rate is one point uh, three three right, one? Whatever it is. Like, yeah. do you want to just do this deal between you and I? Because yeah. we they're causing you a problem. Yeah. I can help that problem. We don't need them. We mm. don't. Yeah. We simply don't need them. I could have solved that problem for her. I didn't have quite as much money as she was looking for, but just just stuff like that just made me be like. It was obvious to me that it was like, why, what do we need the bank for? Mm. You know, like she, it, it's causing a problem for you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And here I am two feet, two meters away from her mm-hmm. being like, uh, I could probably solve your problem. And it's just stuff like that is continuing to happen. We have all these, uh, other people talking about short staff and nobody mm. wants to work and whatever else. And there's just, uh, so much so much, so much evidence that the banks are on their way out. And we were mm-hmm. talking about this in a few episodes ago about the banks going insolvent. And the, the, the Fed was originally designed because banks were fucking up too much in the previous. Right. You know what I mean? So that's why the Fed, that's why the Fed came around because yeah. the banks kept fucking everything up and yeah. they didn't understand how to lend money as a last resort to people. They mm-hmm. were just giving it out, whatever, mm-hmm. they were fucking everybody over and crash the markets. Yeah. And that's why the Fed was, that's why the Fed was invented in the first place, right? Yeah. So the banks have never been doing anybody any good. No. They don't know what they're doing. It's like, because like you said last episode, they just write it on paper. It's just a ledger and it's not even a blockchain yeah. ledger. That's the thing. Once yeah. we're all in blockchain, once in like all these like uh, sports apps and betting apps that you're starting to see these days and, and everything's popping up on blockchain. So there's a reason for that. Yeah. Once the banks get there, they're going to be forced right. to. You don't, it, it's like you could be a person, a skeptical person. I hope the skeptical people start to watch this that I've been speaking with lately. And you you don't have to believe in Bitcoin and you can think that it's not real or it's fairy farts or whatever, yeah. but, but blockchain is very real oh, and yeah. it's amalgamating into our system. Yeah, very quickly. Every day. Very quickly because right? of the efficiency of it. It's undeniable. And as long as that's going to happen, you're always going to have access Access to your Bitcoin, and it's and it, it's funny that we we actually talked about the power grid thing um, on, on one of the episodes. But it's like people do experience power grid issues. But it's like if the whole power grid goes out, like the whole world goes black, you know what I mean? You got way bigger problems. But I even noticed there in Paris and, and other parts yeah. of Western uh, Eastern Europe or whatever it was, Northern Eastern Europe, uh, they're experiencing power outages and things like that, right? So access to these things might actually be, you know, an issue to some people. It, at certain times, exactly. but it's exactly. like the whole power grid's not shut down, and you could still use, you could still use crypto on blockchain to get things to where you need. And who, to be, who's so. to say that they're not just doing that? Yeah, I got it's. Yeah, exactly. It's just, a, po- just a possibility. Right? It's a yeah. possibility that they're yeah. just doing that. Yeah. Just saying, like, oh, hey, like people are relying on all this stuff that this much, yeah. and we're threatening them with taking over ourselves with ourselves by yeah. ourselves yeah. doing it. And it's like, well, we still have this, yeah. so they're going to flex what they can, yeah. right? They, but they can only flex so much because well, they if, just they hire people out. Like, they're the people that are in control aren't the smart people. Yeah. They hire people out, and they're just impeding the progress of innovation too. Like they're not. They can't stop of course this. They, are. they can't of course. stop this stuff. And because but, it, like, it because they have it to pump the brakes, because it right? puts them on the same level as us. So yeah. they're going to do their absolute, you know, yeah. m- the most they can to hold on to their yeah. wealth, to hold on to their power. Like we all know, like uh, all the what's it, you know, all the 
classic, uh, Jesus, what's his name? Shakespeare plays where the royal family, they, 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 everybody thinks they're so amazing, but they actually are so fucked up because the power just fucks with you, right? And, mm. and the, the thought of pot- potentially losing the power mm. fucks you up even more. Right. And here we are yeah. all just like, you know, we got nothing. We're, we, we've got nothing to lose. We don't really care. Like, no, let's, that's we got it. Yeah. We got to go for something. Yeah. So, like, and that, that's that's why they're freaking out. That's why you're seeing them flex these, you know, doing their whatever they're doing, but like whatever stuff like that. Whatever they can do, but it's not going to last forever, like you said. No. Like you said. But another thing, too, is with the banks going insolvent is uh, we have we have word of a bank in uh, the States, the very big and old bank called Bank of the West, being bought out by BMO, which is a newer, younger Canadian bank. I mm-hmm. think this is very interesting because. Because uh, the Bank of the West, very old, probably has a lot of debt. So now we have a new bank, okay. younger bank, uh, Bank of Montreal from a younger country, buying them out. What this seems like to me is debt consolidation at its finest. Mm-hmm. That's all this is. So mm-hmm. this this is what happens. This is what has happened in a lot of the crypto exchanges. Without, without exchanges. debt, the, the economy doesn't keep going. Though. Right, exactly, right? right? But this is what happens with all the, that we've seen with the crypto exchanges. Uh, say FTX was going to buy Voyager and whatever else, the other other ones, I wouldn't, you know, I didn't pay too much attention to yeah, it. But yeah, like yeah. they're, they're you know, they're going to buy them. They're going to, then Binance is going to buy them and blah, blah, blah. The reason they're, that they're doing this is because these banks are, or these platforms or whatever just don't have enough money to, they've given out more than they have. Mm-hmm. Sim- simple as that. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when people start asking for their money, which a lot of people are, because a lot of people are starting to wake up to the fact that my money may not actually be in the bank. Just because it says it on this piece of paper doesn't mean I can actually go there and get it. It's mm-hmm. just an IOU, right? Mm-hmm. So people are starting to pull out of the banks and we're seeing it happen a lot. Yeah. Personally, if I were you, because I definitely would make be make sure that you have a bit of cash on hand, a bit start to DCA out of the banks. I personally yeah. did quite a bit. And I'm just doing things that are like strictly through the bank, like my mortgage and that type of thing, right? Just because, but I am actually, I actually pulled my mortgage out of the bank and I'm up through a private lender. So it's like, I'm getting away from the bank almost, See, almost I went all, entirely. I went, all, I went all in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I went, and last year, most, mostly fuck around to like 29K, but. You know, I've bought so much more since then too that it's not. Yeah. You know, well, you're, you, keep, you keep, you keep, you know, making, generating income and we keep moving yeah, forward yeah, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Always, yeah. Always earn revenue, earn cash to buy yeah. assets. Yeah. You need to continue use, to earn. And then you use the value of your assets to buy liabilities. But just this, this, this is just proves to me yeah. that uh, the same thing that happens with crypto exchanges can happen to the banks. And I, we just need people to realize that it's not. Well, like if people are just like, it's I've, I've talked to people about it. Like, what do you mean? People have millions of dollars in the bank. Like if you need to go get some money, they have it. But right? like, but the, it's like the, what happened with FTX? No, that's ha- like that's been happening with banks for a fucking century yeah. already. Exactly yeah. what happened with FTX, yeah. right? But you and don't that's hear exactly about what it. happened in 1907 or whatever it was yeah. right before the Fed they brought in. the Fed, yeah. they, they brought the Fed in, right? So it's like this FTX and, and blockchain and all that shit just exposes what's actually going on mm-hmm. in traditional finance. Mm-hmm. Because do you think that that fucking little guy, Sam Bankman Freed was a really at the fucking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. doing all that and, yeah. and being involved with oh, there's so many political parties that he yeah. was and and the SEC and all yeah. that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like donated 40 billion to the right? Democrats and 20 billion to the Republicans or whatever. I, I think it's it was like, actually ended up being more. I think they yeah. covered more than it's that. It's like basically but, all the money that you put into FTX that got given to your yeah. your uh, but, your officials. Or but your that senator, happens whatever. with your like, money. How brutal that is that? That happens with your money in the bank though too. So exactly. It's like people need to Anywhere you put that. it. Like, you, you know, so and, now we just see. Now we see. Yeah. Blockchain is exposing yeah. everything. We have Elon talking about he's going to expose everything. Expose. Like, things are happening. Things are happening yeah. real quick, and, and uh, 2023 is going to be a huge year. 2024, I hope your DCA in is going to be the best year DCA for you. In. Keep DCA in. And you got anything else for him, Jay Biggs? <laughs> <laughs> no? Bitcoin's game. Biggs and Bogs out. Peace. Peace. Bigs and Bogs. Ding dong. Ding dong.